Hey everybody, Pastor Jim here from St. John's. It is Tuesday morning. It's time for our daily devotion. Uh, taking opportunity to jump on our Facebook Live event for us to be able to do this. Um, I'm going to wait for a couple minutes. I have folks that usually join, and so we'll take an opportunity to wait for them to do so as we settle in for our time of devotion today. <clears throat> I was out at the church a little earlier for um, some stuff that was going on with the progressive folks, do some maintenance on our equipment, so that was fun. You might have noticed several little videos popping up on our Facebook page. I kept trying to stay up with them and, and delete them before they got out there for too long, but... Uh, hi, Stacy. Good morning to you. Mr. Dunbar, good morning. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Glad you're here today. Barbara, good morning to you. Hi, Shirley. Good morning. Yeah, lots of live streaming testing today. Was this really us? Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, as I mentioned a second ago, we had our progressive electronics, our vendor in. We had some issues with uh, recording of, of our last video for this coming Sunday. And uh, so we had them in to do some work on the system, which required them to get online several times. So as I was saying, I was trying to figure out how to keep up with deleting the short little video posts that were there. I got to go to Christian World Media, our streaming site, and take a whole bunch of them down as well. So, Hi, Susan. Good morning to you. And yes, Burr, a cold winter day. It, it is here, that's for sure. Yeah, I got back home safely, Linda. Thank you very much. That was, I got there at eight o'clock this morning. He was there right at eight o'clock this morning and it was three and a half hours for them to do something. I'm gonna knock on a lot of wood. This has uh, got it taken care of for now. All right, we're going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. So if you want to find that, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Give you a couple of seconds to find Ephesians. If you're on your little Bible app on your phone, boom, you probably had it nothing flat. The rest of us that are flipping pages and one of these printed things might take a moment. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. And here is what Paul writes. At one time you were like a dead person because of the things you did wrong and your offenses against God. You used to act like most people in our world do. You followed the rule of a destructive spiritual power. This is the spirit of disobedience to God's will that is now at work in persons whose lives are characterized by disobedience. At one time, you were like those persons. All of you used to do whatever felt good and whatever you thought you wanted to so that you were children headed for punishment just like everyone else. However, God is rich in mercy. He brought us to life with Christ while we were dead as a result of those things that we did wrong. He did this because of the great love that he has for us. You are saved by God's grace. And God raised us up and seated us in the heavens with Christ Jesus. God did this to show future generations the greatness of his grace by the goodness that God has shown us in Christ Jesus. You are saved by God's grace because of your faith. This salvation is God's gift. It's not something you possessed. It's not something you did that you can be proud of. Instead, we are God's accomplishment. Created in Christ Jesus to go, do good things, God planned for these good things to be the way that we live our lives. 
Um, our author today is Sherla Andes. She is from Indiana. And her focus verse is 1 Thessalonians 1, 4. Brothers and sisters, you are loved by God, and we know that he has chosen you. And here is what she says. I still remember to this day the feeling of standing in grade school gym class, waiting to be chosen by one of the two team captains. Right away, others more athletically gifted were picked. I watched with a sense of dread as the members dwindled, and I remained unchosen and unwanted. At last, my name was called only because the team captains had no other choice. On a few rare occasions, though, I was not one of the last ones picked. If one of my friends was selected to be a team captain, she would always choose me sooner than my skills warranted. Her love for me led her to choose me so I wouldn't be one of the last ones chosen. I was a merry pick, spared from the humiliation of feeling unwanted. This is how God chooses me. God's choosing isn't based on my skills, abilities, or behavior, but on God's mercy. Out of love for me, in spite of my weaknesses, my goodness is not my own, but God's. I need to rem remain mindful of this truth as I look at others, because in God's eyes, we are all mercy picks. We are all chosen because of how loving God is and not because of how good we are. As a, a person who grew up playing athletic sports uh, most of my life um, in, in junior high and things like that, I, I remember, you know, dividing up to play dodgeball or, or one of those kinds of sports. And um, because I wasn't one of the popular kids and one of the more athletic kids and didn't play um, team sports in, in school, um, you know, nobody knew what my talent level would be or skill level would be. So I usually wound up being one of the last picks as well. So I kind of understand that. When we got into high school and started playing church league kind of um, things, or we we just get together and have fun, we always had a kind of a rule of thumb, um, you know, that you um, you picked people um, not based upon their skill level and things like that, but you try to figure out how to even up the teams and and be merciful to people and show mercy to others and pick them a little sooner than you might if you were just simply picking based upon who is the most talented at softball or football or basketball or whatever you were playing. So we tried to figure out how to be a little bit more equitable and, and do that um, out of you know, just kind of a rule of Christian love and kindness. I think in the world today, um, we may though still fall more prey to the way in which we select things and select people. Um, you know, certainly in the job market, people aren't, play, aren't necessarily picked for character and chemistry as much as they are competence. Um, although, you know, most of the organizations that I've worked in, you know, we, we discover somewhere along the way that you can teach people competence generally. You can't teach people character or chemistry. And so sometimes it's better maybe to look at how you how you bring people in based upon those first two things and then teach them what you need them to know. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't these days. But if you think about it, though, from the perspective of how God picks and chooses, God doesn't pick upon competence. God doesn't pick upon character. God didn't even pick upon chemistry. God picks because of all those things and none of those things. God just picks because God loves us. We are all a mercy pick when it comes to God. We are all spared the humiliation of being unwanted and unloved um, because God has shown us the greatest love in Christ Jesus. And so when we look at others, we, we might be better off looking at them the way God looks at them as people who are not assessed based upon skills and abilities and behaviors, but just simply... Um, you know, looked at as ones who are all have their weaknesses, and yet God has overcome them. God has overcome them with grace and with mercy, and that we should be ones who look past many faults in others um, with the eyes of grace and mercy as well. And I think if we do that, we might find ourselves in more healthy relationships with others, and we might find ourselves living life a little bit more fuller. Um, than what we do now because we um, look at people through other lenses. So so what are you doing today? How are you looking at people that are part of your life? 
What are the lenses that you use? Are they the lenses of skills and abilities and behaviors? And are you judging people or, or gauging your relationship based upon those things? Or do you look at it simply as ones who need mercy and love? And that we should be people who grant others the same thing that the Father has given us. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. O oh, loving God, thank you for showing us mercy beyond measure. Help us to extend that same mercy that we have received. And we pray this in Christ. Amen. Well, glad you all were here. Hey, Murray and Diane Blackwater, glad you're here. Christine, good morning to you as well. Glad you all made it today on this cold, wintry day. Stay safe today. Stay warm. And I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow at this time. Otherwise, I hope you have a blessed rest of your Tuesday.